Alright, so I have another video out of Griffith's Quantum Mechanics textbook. Before I get into this, please like the video and subscribe for me. It helps out a lot. And let's get into the problem. So we need to calculate the time derivative of the expectation value of momentum. So let's start by, let me change colors here. Writing this down as m the time derivative of the expectation value of position, which is minus i h bar. And then we integrate psi complex conjugate d psi dx times dx. So we want to take the time derivative of this so that d expectation value of p is minus i h bar those are constants and i'm going to put the derivative inside our integral so now these are going to be uh, it's going to be a partial time derivative now since it's inside the integral it's still psi star d psi dx dx okay and this is of course going to be that's a product rule so when we do this we have d psi star dt times the second function so this is just the product rule plus the derivative of the second function times the first I'm going to rewrite it like this. So this part might seem a little weird, but this just comes from the equality of partial derivatives. So I'm using this fact that the second derivative of psi with respect to x and t is the same thing as the second derivative of psi with respect to tx. So it doesn't matter the order that we do it in, so that's completely fine. Uh, what we want to do next is actually use Schrodinger's equation. And in particular, so I'm just going to write down two equations from the textbook. I'll do them in blue, I guess. d psi dt equals i h bar over 2m. The second derivative of psi with respect to position minus i over h bar the potential times psi this is equation 1.23 out of the textbook we'll need that and we can take the complex conjugate of 1.23 and you get the following so the time derivative of psi complex conjugate is minus i h bar over 2m. The second derivative of psi complex conjugated with respect to x, and now plus i over h bar, the potential v psi. This is equation 1.24 out of the textbook. Okay? And you might see how this could be a little bit useful because uh, as we look up here, you can see how we can rewrite d psi dt and d psi star dt that way. So essentially, um, all that we really need to do here is replace these. So we can plug into here um, with this guy and so on. So let's do that. What we can say then is that this equation here, I'll rewrite it. Which we got just by a uh, product rule. We can rewrite this as 
minus i over h bar 2m, the second derivative of psi complex conjugated with respect to x, plus i over h bar, the potential psi star. So we can rewrite that in this way. And then what do we have left? Well, we still have our d psi dx. So I'm going to just slap that in at the end here. OK. And now we can do the same thing with the other term, because we have psi star d by dx d psi dt. And we can use equation 1.23 there to uh, get that. So if we add that to our product rule, so we're rewriting our product rule still. And now we're going to substitute in what we have from the Schrodinger equation. So i h bar over 2m, the second derivative of psi with respect to x minus i over h bar, the potential v, let's write that a little nicer, psi. So all that we've done is we've rewritten the product rule um, in terms of the Schrodinger equation, essentially. And now what we can do is we can actually continue to expand and rewrite this and group terms together. So I'm going to factor in i over i h bar over 2m. And let's see, we have our derivative with respect to x. So if we think about this bit, we need to take a derivative of that. So that'll be actually the third derivative now of psi with respect to x. And then we have minus from uh, over here, psi complex conjugated dx. And of course, there's still the d psi dx hanging out at the front from here that we need to include. Okay, so I'm just grouping those together in that way. Plus, now I'm gonna to group together the imaginary part, or uh, not the imaginary part, but the potential part. So I'm gonna factor out an i over h bar. And from the term on the left, we have our potential times psi star d psi dx. And then over here, we have minus. So we're going to take our derivative here. And keep in mind, we have a psi star here. So we're going to have psi star. That's not being operated by the derivative. So I'm going to put that out front. And then the partial derivative with respect to x of the potential times the wave function. OK. So that's all great. And all of this goes inside our integral. So essentially what we're going to do, just in the interest of time, is we're going to integrate all this stuff with respect to x. Okay? So you could work through this integral. Um, on the first term here, you could integrate this by parts a bunch of times. I'll go ahead and say that this term ends up equaling zero. And if you'd like to see this worked out in detail, I can do that as well. Or you could just, I guess, plug it in somewhere. Um, and then for the second term, well, let's see. We can write this as your potential psi star, so we have an i h bar, of course, that's a constant. That can be pulled out, and notice we have a minus i h bar here. So good news there, that'll actually cancel. Uh, but let's simplify it inside first. d psi dx minus psi star and then we need to take a product rule here. 
So what we'll have is the parcel of V with respect to X times Psi. And then what you'll have is minus. Uh, now we need to do the other term. So what we'll have is V uh, D Psi DX. And then just your Psi this time. We're not taking the derivative of it. Um, okay. Now let's see, can we simplify this at all? Well, we can. We can rewrite this as simply minus psi squared dv dx, right? So nothing too crazy there. Uh, seems pretty straightforward. This makes the integral much easier because what we said was time derivative of your expectation value of momentum. Well, again, the I h bar is going to cancel. There's still the negative sign out front. Um, so we'll have minus this integral of psi squared and then parcel of the potential with respect to x dx or this is by definition the expectation value of negative d psi dx. That's the definition of an expectation value when you have it sandwiched like that between uh, your psi star psi. Okay? And that is the theorem we were looking to prove. So this one's a little weird. Essentially what you need to do is write down your expectation value for the derivative of momentum with respect to time. Then you need to integrate what's inside the integrand by parts and make use of this property, which is called equality of partial derivatives. You also want to use Schrodinger's equation, so 1.2, 1.23 and 1.24. You can substitute those in, expand, and combine your terms. And then what you want to do is integrate all of this. This is probably the messiest part, but um, at least the left-hand side, if you integrate it by parts, uh, I think you have to do it multiple times. But if you do that, you'll get that part to be zero. And on the right-hand side, um, this simplifies actually quite nicely, and that's an easy integral to do, okay? So that is the process. Hopefully that makes sense, and if you wouldn't mind please liking the video and subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you.